Welcome to part two of Let's Play Trial of Champions by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 94, which I haven't read yet, so let's read this now. Okay, uh, you get into a steady rhythm of ducking and jumping, and slowly the pole spins to a halt. You have survived another ordeal. Uh, the next test begins immediately. You and the rest are split into two groups of five. You watch the first group of a dwarf, a man-orc, a woman warrior, a barbarian and a dark-skinned southerner stand silently as a spiked ball and chain is lashed to each of their sword arms and, and a small shield is, is lashed to their other hand. Uh, they are then blindfolded and ordered to commence battle against one another one another until there is only one left standing. It is a sickening spectacle to watch as the fighters tread warily around the arena swinging their balls and chains. Uh, the dwarf falls first, quickly followed by the warrior woman. In the end the southerner stands triumphant and his blindfold is removed. He is led away and then each member of your group is armed in the same way. Uh, you can feel your heart pounding in your chest as the order is given to commence combat against the four unseen adversaries. Um, barefoot in the sand, nobody makes a sound. If you wish to step to your left, turn to 297. If you wish to step to your right, turn to 9. Okay, we are going to step to our right and turn to 9. Here we go. Okay, you step slowly to your right and almost immediately hear an agonized cry followed by the dull thud of a body falling to the ground to your left. You walk on without making a sound. A chill runs down your spine when your outstretched shield arm comes into contact with something, but it is only the arena wall. You turn around and walk towards the centre of the arena. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 166. If you are unlucky, turn to 73. Okay, let's test our luck. Our luck at the moment is 11, so we need a, a dice score of 11 or lower, which we did. Good. Let's get rid of the buzzing. But we've lost a luck point, of course, because we had to test our luck, so that's that. No, wrong one. There we go. And a comma. Okie dokie, so 166. Here we go. Okie dokie. Unknown to you, there is a body lying in the sand directly in your path, and you are fortunate not to trip over as you pass by. You decide to stand still for a moment and listen. You hear the whooshing sound of a ball and chain being whirled through the air directly in front of you. Will you stand your ground and swing your own ball and chain, turn to 183, step back, turn to 349, or lie down in the sand and trip up the person who is advancing, turn to 316. Okay, um, we are going to step back and turn to 349. As you step back, you trip over the body lying in the sand. Your advancing opponent hears you fall and moves in for the kill, but he too falls over the body and lands on top of you. He is heavy and drenched with sweat. You start to grapple with him in the sand, punching with your shield while trying to free your other arm to swing the ball and chain. Slave. Skill 9, stamina 8. If you win, turn to 196. Okay, so slave 9, 8. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we roll for him first, as, as always. Okay, my skill is still 11. Okay, off we go. 9 plus 3 is 12, and I get uh, 13, so 12 to 13. Okay, so that takes off uh, 2 points of his stamina, which are slightly above. Okay, 9 plus 4 is 13, I get 17. 13 to 17. 
put some down to 4. 9 plus 5 is 14. I get 19. 14 to 19. Being very lucky with the dice rolls. And of course I've jinxed myself, so now I'm going to lose. Uh, 9 plus 9 is 18. There we go, what did I say? Uh, 18 to 17. What did I say? Always, always jinx. Right, that puts me down to uh, 17 stamina. Let's keep going. Okay, 9 plus 2 is 11. I get, oh, that's much better, uh, 11 to 23. And that's the end of Mr. Slave. That puts him down to naught. There we go. Okay. So we won. Let's get let's get rid of the annoying buzzing. Go away. There we are. And uh, turn to 196, which is 14 squared. Um, he, he looks friendly, doesn't he? Okay, 196. You jump to your feet and listen intently for other opponents. Hearing nothing, you step warily to the left. Turn to 120. You walk very slowly, as you know there are bodies lying in the sand. You stop to listen, but hear nothing. You decide to turn around and walk in the opposite direction. Suddenly you hear a gruff voice cry out. If there is anybody else, I'm over here. You decide to accept the bold challenge and walk in the direction of the voice, swinging your ball and chain. You clash head-on with your unseen opponent in a blind fight to the death. Fighting slave, skill 8, stamina 8. If you win, turn to 61. Okay, fighting slave, eight eight. And we're off again. Okay, eight plus eight is sixteen. I get twenty two. So sixteen to twenty two. Puts him down to six. Eight plus eight is sixteen. I get nineteen. So sixteen to nineteen. Puts him down to 4. Okay, 8 plus 12 is 20. I get 22. So 20 to 22. Puts him down to 2. 8 plus 4 is 12. I get 17. So 12 to 17. And that's the end of him. Didn't jinx myself this time. No famous last words this time. So... Uh, that's the end of Mr. Fighting Slave. You are brave, but that's the end of you. Get rid of the buzzing, and let's move on. <coughs> if you win, turn to 61. Which I did, so here we go. Nope. A cheer goes up as your opponent drops to the ground. You hear guards enter the arena and soon your blindfold is removed and your weapons are untied from your wrists. You are led away to your cell, realising that only the southerner stands between you and victory. That night you are well fed and your wounds are bandaged. Add four stamina points. Okie dokie, that puts me up to 21 stamina. In the morning, the familiar ritual of being led into the arena is repeated, but this time you are made to stand face to face with the southerner. You are each handed a dagger and a studded glove. At the command of Lord Carnus, the final arena battle commences. Southerner, skill 10, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 261. Okay, there he is. Blimey, he has been, uh, he's been taking his protein shakes, hasn't he? Goodness gracious me. Look at that. All right, um... And his other things that he's been taking. Anyway, um, Southerner, skill 10, stamina 10. Just need to make another one of these. There we go. Okay, Southerner, skill 10, stamina 10. I mean, this is tough. I mean... All those battles, and only get an extra four points of stamina, and now I have to fight someone who's ten, uh, ten and ten. And the maximum skill you can have is twelve, and mine's only eleven. That's why I said you need some pretty good skill for this. Ian Livingstone 
um, pulls no punches in his books. You know, that's why they're sort of, you know, in my opinion, he's not as good as uh, Steve Jackson. He's a bit too sort of uh, cruel, um, Ian Livingstone. He's a bit too sort of zealous with his uh, with his number of battles and stuff. He makes them too difficult, in short. Okay, so, so 10 and 10, off we go. So 10 plus 8 is 18, I get 17. So that's... 18 to 17. That means he hurts me and uh, he draws first blood. Uh, puts me down to 19. Okay, 10 plus 5 is 15. I get 16. So 15 to 16. Puts him down to 8. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, 10 plus 8 is 18, I get 23. 18 to 23. Puts them down to 6. No, 6, not 5. Okay, next. Um, 10 plus 6 is 16, I get 17. 16 to 17. Puts them down to 4, nearly forgot there. 10 plus 4 is 14, I get uh, 20. 14 to 20. Puts them down to 2. 10 plus 11 is 21, I get 17. 21 to 17. That means he hurts me again. Down to 17. Whoops, that's a full stop. Um, 10 plus 10 is 20, I get 14. So 20 to 14. He hurts me again. Puts me down to 15. Okay. 10 plus 3 is 13, I get 19. So 13 to 19. That was not cheating. I really did get a 3 there, or he got a 3 rather. I did press it. Just coincidental, it was the same number as it already was. I did not cheat, just in case you think I did. Um, yeah, so that kills the southerner, or, you know, loot, yeah, kills the southerner. There we go. So that puts him down to naught. There's no buzzing, so that's good. Buzzing's gone automatically because I pressed roll again. Anyway, if you win, 10 to 261. We did, so let's go. Okay, as the southerner drops to his knees, clutching his stomach, he manages to utter a few words with his dying breath. Good luck in the dungeon, stranger, but if you get a chance to be alone with Carnus, remember those of us who died in his arena. The southerner grimaces with pain and falls silent. That's really nice of him to say that. It's really horrible, this, having to kill people like this for sport. It's really nasty. I don't, I don't like it. It's sort of... I know, it's just, I just don't like thinking about it. It's... It's brutal and nasty, and I, and I just don't think it's appropriate for a children's book, to be honest. It's just... I mean, if I'm finding it nasty and I'm an adult, I mean... Uh, the it's, it's a good job I didn't read this when I was, like, ten years old or eight years old or something, because this is just unpleasant. Anyway, um, uh, good luck in the dungeon, stranger, but if you get a chance to be alone with Carnus, remember those of us who died in his arena. The southerner grimaces with pain and falls silent. You vow to yourself that you will avenge your fellow slaves' deaths and kill Lord Carnus if you survive the deadly labyrinth of Fang. That night you are the honoured guest of Lord Carnus and, in, and indulge yourself in your, in your every whim. You gorge yourself on delicious food and enjoy yourself long into the night. After a week of luxurious living, you return to full fitness. Restore your stamina score to, your, to its initial value. Okay, so that puts me back up to 23, doesn't it? Yep. Comma, there we are. So back to full stamina. <coughs> then, locked in chains, you set sail with Lord Carnus and 30 of his guards, and 10 days later arrive in Fang, the venue for the annual Trial of Champions. The town is swarming with people intrigued by the trial intrigued by the trial and eager to celebrate. However, there is no time for you to enjoy the hospitality of Baron Sakamvit, as it is late in the evening of the 
the 30 of April, 30th of April, and the trial begins at dawn the next day. You spend the night in a tavern under the watchful eyes of the guards, and at dawn are led to the entrance of the deadly labyrinth. It is supported by ornately carved stone pillars depicting demons, deities, and writhing serpents. You see Baron Sakomvich shaking the hands of the other contestants. Um, a chaos champion wearing dark spiked armor, an eastern warlord in full battle costume, an elven prince, and a dwarf noble. This year the prize has attracted illustrious contenders. You take your place alongside them and are then asked to draw a bamboo stick from the hand of the baron. The number two is etched on the stick. You are to enter the dungeon second after the dwarf. To the cheers of the exultant onlookers you pass between the pillars, armed only with a magnificent sword given to you by Lord Carnus. Okay, so we have a sword. Um, yeah. Um, without a backpack, food or armour, you feel ill-prepared for the coming ordeal, but at least you have this fine sword and a leather pouch at your belt. A leather pouch at your belt. The sound of the crowd quickly dies away as you walk on down the dimly lit tunnel. What honours lie before you, it is impossible to imagine. Honours. Sorry, sorry. What horrors lie before you, it is impossible to imagine. Um, but you know, I, I did think that looked a bit weird, honours without a U, because that's the American spelling, then now it makes sense, because it's what horrors lie before you, it is impossible to imagine, but you know that Baron Sakumvit has spent the last year modifying his death trap dungeon, so that it is now reputedly lethal beyond comprehension, but your desire to avenge the deaths of your fellow slaves makes you determined to succeed. Uh, the tunnel leads straight ahead for 50 yards, and then you come to a doorway in the left-hand wall with a keep out sign written on it in dried blood. You hear scratching and sniffing sounds coming from the other side of the door. If you wish to draw your sword and open the door, turn to 374. If you'd rather keep walking down the tunnel, turn to 82. Okay, we are going to draw our sword and open the door. Turn to 374, and I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. Okay. Okay, the door opens easily and you step into a small room. Before you have time to look around, a huge black hellhound leaps at you with flame shooting out from its from its cavernous mouth. You must fight this savage beast to the death. Hellhound, skill 7, stamina 6. Let's have a look at him. Oh dear. He'd make a fine pet. I bet the puppies look cute. Okay. After each attack round, roll one die. It's very strange how it says die in this, because in, in the other Ian Livingstone only books, sometimes he says dice instead of die, which is annoying because it's one die, two or more dice. Anyway, after each attack round, roll one die. On a roll of one or two, deduct one additional stamina point from your score as a result of being burnt by the Hellhound's flame. If you win, turn to 52. So it's after each attack round. Anyway, 7-6. Hellhound. 7-6. Okay, so we're rolling for him first. Um, 7 plus 4 is 11. I get seven. Um, wait a minute, what? Yeah, eleven, and I get what? Yeah, uh, eighteen. Then yeah, eleven and eighteen. Sorry, I'm being stupid. Eleven and eighteen. That means he loses two stamina points. But I have to roll one die. Um, and if it's a one or two, I deduct an additional stamina point from your score. That's interesting because it says after each, each attack round. So. Regardless of whether I win or lose, I have to roll a die. But then it says deduct one additional stamina point. So the additional stamina point would assume I've already been hurt, but I haven't if I've won the attack round, so that's stupid. But I think it means just after every attack round regardless, so I'll do that. And that's what makes it harder, so I'll do what makes it harder. Anyway, um, roll one die. If I, I, I don't want to get a one or a two, and I get a two. Fantastic. That's such good news. Right, okay, so I have to deduct one stamina point. Okay, next attack round. Okay, 7 plus 6 is 13. I get 21. So 13 to 21. 
And that puts it to two. Puts him down to two, rather. But I have to roll the die again. One or two I don't want. Five, good. So I don't lose any, any stamina. Okay, so next, uh, seven plus ten is seventeen. I get twenty. Seventeen to twenty. Puts him down to naught, and that's the end of Mr. Hellhound. Okay, let's get rid of the dreadfully irritating buzzing. Yes, go away, and let's move on. Okay, so... Um, if you win, turn to 52. We did, and that's where we're going. The room is empty apart from a pile of straw and old bones in the far corner. If you wish to rummage through the straw, turn to 36. If you would rather leave the room and walk along the tunnel, turn to 82. We are going to rummage through the straw, so let's turn to 36. You find a gold ring lying on the stone floor under the straw. You place it in the leather pouch on your belt and then leave the room to continue along the tunnel. Turn to 82. Okay, so we have a gold ring. That was the point of fighting the Hellhound, by the way. Okay, gold ring. There we are. Uh, turn to 82. Uh, the tunnel soon comes to an end at a T-junction. If you wish to head left, turn to 229. If you wish to head right, turn to 304. We're going to head right and turn to 304. In the distance, you hear the sound of running water, and soon the tunnel ends at the edge of a pit. A rope bridge straddles the pit, and beyond it, the tunnel continues straight on. There is a wooden box tied to the bridge, and a sign above it which reads, Pay Gold to Cross. A rope hangs down from the bridge. Peering down into the gloom of the pit, you can just make out a fast-flowing river far below. Will you? Drop a gold object into the box and walk across the bridge, turn to 27. Walk across the bridge without paying, turn to 152. Or climb down the rope into the pit, turn to 355. Okay, we are going to climb down the rope and into the pit, and turn to 355. But let's have a look at the uh, picture there. There we go does not inspire me with confidence, that bridge, to be honest. Especially the skull. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to climb down the rope and into the pit. Let's turn to 355. Okay, your feet find a ledge protruding out over the river. You release the rope, walk along the ledge, and find that it leads to a completely black cave mouth. Suddenly, two bony arms shoot out of the darkness and try to push you off the ledge into the river. Roll two dice. If the total is the same as or less than your skill score, turn to 100. If the total is higher than your skill score, turn to 338. Okay, um, I have it on good authority that if we fail this skill test, we are dead. So we need this uh, skill test to be well dice roll to be less than or equal to eleven, which it did, um, which it is thankfully. So yeah, um, again, not nice of Ian, Ian Livingstone to put that in, although he is a multi-millionaire, so he doesn't care, does he? Uh, sorry, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but you know, um, roll two dice. Yeah, so total is less than your skill score. We're turning to a hundred. So, 100. So I said it like a dart sort of scorer there. Um, only your lightning, uh, your lightning quick reflexes... Um, I'll, say that, I'll say that again. Only your lightning quick reflexes... No, that makes sense. That doesn't work, does it? Only your lightning quick reflexes save you from being knocked into the river. You teeter on the ledge, uh, you teeter on the ledge, but regain your balance. You draw your sword to attack your enemy. From out of the dark cave steps a creature which has the appearance of a stooped, starving man with long arms touching the ground and gaunt, brown, leathery skin. You recognise it as a strider, a cunning hired killer. The strider is armed with an iron pole which has blades at either end. It is a fearsome weapon in the hands of the dexterous Strider. Strider, skill 9, stamina 9, if you win, turn to 19. 
Blimey. That is quite weird. It reminds me of um, Benny from uh, Total Recall, you know, when he's when they find out he's a mutant and he, and he you know, and then his arm sort of you know, elongate and he takes his hands off and he goes, Benny's the name. Hey Quaid, remember me And in the end, um Quaid says, Screw you and um and kills Benny by um uh, putting a rock drill through him. Uh, that was a quite good uh, that was quite a good bit. I would enjoy that film if I hadn't seen it about two hundred times. I do love the film, but uh I can't ever watch it again. It's just it's just removed the enjoyment of it, I'm afraid. Especially when you can sort of you know, when you've memorized it almost by heart like I have. Anyway, Strider nine nine, off we go. Okay, so another battle. I mean, you know, again this is a tough book. Ian Livingstone pulls no punches. So nine nine. All right, nine plus five is fourteen. I get eighteen. So fourteen to eighteen. Puts him down to seven. Okay, next. Uh, nine plus three is twelve. I get twenty-one. So twelve to twenty-one. That's five. All right. Okay. Next. Nine plus five is fourteen. I get seventeen. So fourteen to seventeen. Puts him down. Nearly forgot again. Puts him down to three. Nine plus seven is sixteen. I get nineteen. So sixteen to nineteen. Uh, almost forgot again. <laughs> Put some down to one. I keep nearly forgetting to do that. Um, okay, last one. I hope. I jinxed myself already. I know. Nine plus. Yeah, there we go. Twenty. Oh no. I, I get a good score as well. So twenty to twenty-three. No, sorry. Twenty to twenty-two. Sorry. Twenty to twenty-two. Can't count. And that puts him down to naught, and that's the end of Mr. Strider. Right. Um, let's get rid of the buzzing. And. Let's move on. Okay, so we won and we're turning to 19. Okay, 19. Uh, the Strider has no possessions apart from a bone medallion hanging around its neck. If you wish to put the medallion around your own neck, turn to 70. If you'd rather climb back up the rope, turn to 328. Okay, we're going to put the medallion around our own neck and turn to 70. Nothing strange or untoward happens to you as a result of putting on the medallion. You look around and, and decide the best plan is to climb back up the rope. Okay, so we have a bone medallion. Medallion, there we go. Um, and we're turning to 328. You climb back out onto the edge of the pit and, and decide what to do next. Will you drop a gold object into the wooden box and walk across the bridge, turn to 27, walk across the bridge without paying, turn to 152, or walk back down the tunnel, down the tunnel and beyond the T-junction, turn to 229. Okay, we're going to walk across the bridge without paying, so we're going to turn to 152. Extortion. Yeah, we're avoiding extortion. Uh, you step warily onto the rope bridge, testing it to make sure it will bear your weight. You look around but see nobody, so hurry across the bridge. So you hurry across the bridge unchallenged. Turn to 117. Now the tunnel eventually comes to a dead end. There is a stone tablet set in it, uh, set in the end wall with a small circular hole in its centre. Around the hole are etched the words, one is on and two is gone. If you wish to reach into the circular hole, turn to 179. If you'd rather retrace your steps back over the bridge and walk beyond the T-junction, turn to 229. We are going to reach into the circular hole and turn to 179. Here we go. 
Slowly you reach further into the hole until your fingers touch two buttons, one with the number 1 stamped into it and the other bearing the number 2. If you wish to press button number 1, turn to 12. If you wish to press button number 2, turn to 214. Okay, we are going to press button number 1 and turn to 12. As soon as you press the button, a large stone slab in the left-hand wall of the tunnel pivots open. You step through the gap and find yourself in another tunnel. You soon come to a door in the right-hand wall which has an old broom nailed to it. If you wish to open the door, turn to 246. If you would rather carry on down the tunnel, turn to 346. Okay, um, we're going to open the door and turn to 246. Okay, as soon as you open the door, you are met by a blast of warm air. For a second you think it is a trap until you see a huge fire burning under a simmering cauldron in the centre of the small room. An old woman is dropping rats, slugs, maggots and centipedes into the cauldron and appears to be enjoying herself. If you wish to enter the room, turn to 186. If you would rather close the door and continue along the tunnel, turn to 346. There she, ugh. Um, well, the cauldron's not happy, is he? Blimey. Anyway, nice drawing. Anyway, let's have another look. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, we are going to enter the room and turn to 186. Here we go. The old crone looks up, cackles an evil laugh, and then throws some dust on the floor. A cloud of smoke rises up and the old witch vanishes. Suddenly there is movement above you and you have just enough time to draw your sword as two vampire bats swoop down to attack. First vampire bat, skill 5, stamina 5. Second vampire bat, um, skill 5, stamina 4. Fight the bats one at a time. However, while you are fighting the first vampire bat, the second will cling to your back and suck blood from your neck. Lose one additional stamina point during every attack round with the first vampire bat. If you win, turn to 142. Okay, so first vampire bat. First vampire bat. Skill 5, stamina 5. Okay, so let's do this, but every, you know, every time I have an attack round, I have to lose a stamina point. Anyway, 5 plus 7 is 12, I get 20. 12 to 20. Uh, that's 3, but uh, puts them down to 3, but I lose a stamina point because of the, yeah, the, the blood sucking and all that. Um, okay, next... Uh, 5 plus 7 is 12, I get 22, 12 to 22, puts him down to 1, but again I've lost another stamina point because of the blood sucking, puts me down to 20, okay, um, next, 5 plus 5 is 10, I get 17, so 10 to 17, so Mr. Vampire Bat is dead, but... I have to lose another stamina point because I still have that annoying critter sucking on me. Alright, um, okay, so now we're doing the second vampire bat. Now this one is 5-4, isn't it? Alright, so skill 5, stamina 4. Um, okay, but now he's not sucking on me anymore because I'm, I'm fighting him. Let me just confirm he is 5-4. He is, right. No, I need that back, sorry. Um, there we are. Okay, 5 plus 12 is 17. Unbelievable, he actually got me. 17 to 16. Oh dear. Unbelievable. Right, that puts me down to uh, 17, because that's a full hit, isn't it? Right, 5 plus 5 is 10. I get 21, so 10 to 21. Alright, puts them down to two. Alright, next. Five plus eight is thirteen. I get nineteen. Two eights in a row. So thirteen to nineteen, and that is the end of him. 
Goodbye, Mr. Second Vampire Bat, and we're at naught, and you're dead. Good. Okay, get rid of the buzzing, and we are there. Okay, if you win, turn to 442. We did, so let's go. Okay. Um, okay, I am going to do paragraph 142 in the next video. So I've, so I've done the boring bit, which is the battle, but now I will save the interesting paragraph for the beginning of the next video. We've done 35 minutes roughly, so um, yeah, so thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll be starting on paragraph 142 and dealing with the cauldron and stuff. So thanks again, and goodbye.